mm -hmm. 10%. It's like about a 9% profit, okay? But, Mike, that isn't what I did. I did income method number three. Now, let's let's take a look because before I can do income method three, I have to have my insurance policy in place. So here I'm buying Research in Motion, $84.04. And at the same time, I purchased a Generate 09. Now, remember, this is 07 that I'm doing this. But I bought a Generate 09 $100 put option for twenty-four seventy. Well, that makes my total invested amount 108.74. I have forced myself to only buy one position. Okay, so I was trading a six-figure account, but I only wanted to put, you know, I, I was diversified among 11 positions. <laughs> okay, and and so I only had about eleven thousand dollars to put in this particular trade. So I've limited myself uh, to just one contract, one put contract, and and 100 shares of stock. But uh, look at what happens here, Mike. I've got the guaranteed exit of $100 if something really bad happens to research in motion. Mm -hmm. Well, usually I like to risk only 5 6%. This particular stock, an earnings announcement was coming up, and I knew that if it went up, it would go up real good. And uh, so I made my at-risk amount actually as high as I really like to go, and that's 8%. Okay? So I've got an 8% risk in this radioactive profit machine. All right. Now, uh, here's what happens. Okay. The market goes up. Research in motion begins to approach hundred dollars a share. Okay. And three weeks into the position I did a put spread. Now uh, some folks will be thinking, well geez, I can't sell a put against a put or whatever in my IRA. Well listen, you could do this in your IRA. I promise you. I sold to close the January 09 put that I'm holding and simultaneously bought to open in my uh, Options Express account. This was one commission. Okay, it was $9.95, one commission to uh, trade this. Okay, I bought to open in October 07, $100 put. Okay, both of these are $100 puts. I guess I should put, mm -hmm. put that up there. They're both $100 puts. So it's the same strike, but different expiration months. Now, Mike, is that a credit or a debit? You've generated a credit here, Kurt, because you've sold to close your initial put at 1980, and you bought to open the second one for only 720. So you took in 12 dollars and 60 cents right now. Right now, some folks are going to miss this. They're going to. They're going to. It's not going to compute for them. They're going to say, "Wait, you lost on the put." Yes and no. Okay, because the stock advanced 16 dollars for my put to go down 490. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> the stock advanced. The put. Uh, it goes down. I don't care. I'm law on both. Mike, if I took uh, $4.90 out of your pocket, would that be okay with you? Well, I'd question as to what your motives were without just taking money out of my pocket without asking, sir. Okay. Well, if I took the 4 90 and said, hey, thanks, I just want exact change for something, here's a $20 bill. Well, I think I'd be okay with that transaction. I don't know if you would be or your wife would be, but I would be. <laughs> yeah, and if I did it a hundred times in a row, you'd be really happy. Well, that's exactly that's what the right. market did. But here's here's what I did. I took that put and I swapped it for another cheaper put and generated a credit of twelve sixty. Now let's look at what that does to our net position. The net position that I started with is I've got stock for eighty four oh four. Okay, I've got the put option for twenty four seventy. Okay, mm -hmm. we add those together. This is my initial cost basis. My initial whoops. There we go. Initial cost basis is one hundred seventy four. Then I did income method three. I could only do income method three after the stock changed and the time value of my put also changed. Mm -hmm. Okay? But the spread brought in twelve sixty. Now Mike, if I swapped one put for another, do I still have the hundred dollar put option? Yes, you still have an insurance policy in place at the one hundred strike. It just has a nearer expiration, right? Correct. Okay. So the 108.74 that I spent minus this spread, okay, equals a new cost basis of 96.14, but I'm still holding what strike of put? You still have a 100 strike put, Kurt. That's right. Okay. So my at-risk amount is now what? Well, it's negative. You're... At risk amount is uh, I'm sorry your at risk amount is negative because your insurance policy that you're guaranteed to get back is higher than your new effective cost basis. 
Right. Now, I couldn't swap that one put for another put on the same day that I bought it. It doesn't work that way. Okay, the stock has to move before I can do something like this, but this is income method three. It's one of the ways of bulletproofing the stock, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, here's what happened, okay? As we're headed into earnings announcement, uh, I, I sent out a letter to my fishing subscribers. These are the folks that look over my shoulder and see the trades that I'm doing, mm -hmm. okay? And I said, I know the future, which is funny. Why is that funny? Because the, normally we say we don't know the future, which is why we're trading radioactively. We don't know what's going to happen next. Right. But I knew my future. My future was that in the morning I'd be grinning ear to ear because if that earnings announcement was bad and research in motion had an overnight gap of 30% like it did a few months ago, mm -hmm. okay, that I still have already locked in my profit. I've arranged for a 3.55% profit, and I can get out without any problems. However, there is another possibility, isn't there, Mike? Yes, there is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the stock could go up. The stock could. And uh, yeah, what happened in this particular case was that the earnings announcement was positive, and the shares uh, shot up to $119 and then started coming back down. And when it did, uh, I sold it at 114.74. Uh, Mike, the total time in the position is six weeks, and I make a 16.23% gain. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Now, if I had sold the covered call, remember our example at the beginning, I'd feel like a chump because I'd be obligated to deliver that stock at $85 a share, and I'd make a much smaller gain. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, but the fact is that the, uh, you know, <clears throat> where a covered call would limit your upside, a married put leaves it open, but the really exciting part about it is along the way you can employ one of the 10 income methods and uh, and make yourself bulletproof to where you can't lose any money. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that's uh, that's uh, one of the income methods, and I, I think that's uh, probably all the time that we've got. Um, let me let me ask uh, folks uh, what kinds of things impress you from today's uh, webinar. We didn't actually show the adjustments of how to turn a losing trade into a winning one, so um, so maybe you don't want to answer that one, but we did uh, show one of ten different income methods, uh, and uh, if you like the idea of having ten different arrows in your quiver, ten different tools in your box, uh, that might be a good one to answer. If you like the idea of bulletproofing, mm -hmm. If you like the idea of starting out with single-digit risk and yet still having unlimited upside in case you're right about the direction of your stock, these are really good, positive things. Okay. Mike, let me go ahead and close the poll and share the results. And what's our winner? Well, it looks like bulletproofing, going from low risk to no risk, isn't it? Yep. And then second place, a single-digit risk but unlimited upside. Listen, Mike, we've shown... Uh, those two things. We've shown, first of all, one of ten different ways that we bulletproof, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. And, uh, and, and of course, the single-digit risk but unlimited upside, that's what we showed at the outset, okay? How to buy a stock, also buy an in-the-money put. Mm -hmm. It has a mathematical edge and a, 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 uh, an edge over buying long calls. Two different ways. One way is the fact that it forces your position size so that you don't take too big of a position. Yes. And and secondly, that it actually prepays you the interest that you would normally have if you deposited into an, a risk-free interest-bearing account, right? It prepays that. Okay, let me go ahead and hide this. We'll ask uh, one last poll, uh, and that poll is what do you need from us next, okay? Would you like to know what kinds of uh, specials um, we are running uh, for the blueprints? Uh, would you like to look over a successful trader's shoulder? Uh, would you like the trade simulator tool, which we actually didn't feature today? Would you like the, the Power Options search and destroy platform for finding these kinds of trades? Uh, or perhaps the before and after tool that will show you the different adjustments, what to do after getting into a, a position. And uh, let's see, Mike, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the reactive trading site so that we can direct folks to these things if, uh, if indeed they're interested. 
Did any other questions come up that, that uh, you think would be pertinent to answer the whole? <laughs> I would love to answer them all, but we're short on time. I've been going through and answering them as best I can. I'm going to forget uh -huh. some of the names, but I'm just going to address some of the ones that came through. Uh, a great one that uh, is getting addressed right now, Russ just wrote in, and he said five minutes before.